Hello guys, this is the Betamax man here. Look what I picked up at the Goodwill for uh, $7.99. This is a forehead hi-fi stereo with flying erase heads. And there are some editing functions here. You have video insert, audio insert to your tape speed timer programming, your tracking, channel, input selection, pretty basic, I mean this is a higher end machine but uh, still kind of basic, it doesn't really have much of the, um, it doesn't have a whole lot of features to it but it does have, oh it's got a switch for VTR 1, 2 and 3. So I can put this on VTR3 and use my Sony remote and control uh, my beta decks with my VHS because I believe now it may not have the same code. A Betamax remote may not work on the on the VHS machines because they might be under a different uh, remote code. So, but now what I've done was I've already pulled the screws off. We're going to take the top off. I have done nothing to this machine. I have not even plugged it in. Now, is this thing going to work? No, it's not going to work. I mean, it wouldn't be at the Goodwill if it worked, right? Especially this particular model. Because this model is... Let's put the lid on. First, I want to see if this... Um, guide is gummed up which it's not so somebody's probably lubricated that it looks like it's moving okay here so I'm gonna go ahead and let's investigate these tape guides that one's not broke well oh, that one is yep blue gear that's not supposed to move freely like that. So that, that's the blue gear there that's messed up on it. But we'll plug it in anyway. Doesn't hurt. See what happens. We'll see if there's any power because there could be... This actually looks like one of the same power supplies that they used in the R5UC Super VHS decks. This looks like it might be the same power supply. That power supply is also very similar to a Sony Betamax SL2000 uh, and the SLS600. They look a lot like this particular power supply. So, okay, this thing is completely dead, which is what I kind of expected. Oh, no, it's not. Apparently the display doesn't light up until you press power. So we already know that this thing is not going to work. But I just want to see if it's maybe timed correctly. Does this thing, is it timed right? Has somebody been into this thing and has somebody messed up the timing on this? Well, then we're not sure, so... Let's just see what happens. So it will play, but without um, the one guide, the, the guide's b broken blue gear. Chewing up my tape. Yeah, it's not going to work right, so... It just needs a blue gear, and this thing will work. So how bad did it chew my tape here? Yeah, I think it chewed the top of it. Yeah, it started wrinkling it. Hey guys, um... This is, uh, the, the Sony VHS machine that I got yesterday. Um... So, I got the screws off, because I want to take the bottom panel off. Uh, basically, I want to see um, and confirm 
uh, if it's the blue gear that's broken or if it's another gear that's broken. So I've got the screws out, so let's get the panel off. And uh, this one's a little difficult to get off. There's no, uh, nothing to get. Might take me a minute here. see what I see um, okay there's part of the blue here anyway but yeah so we're gonna have to wait until I can get a, a gear a blue gear for this and once we do that we'll install it and this thing should be up and running hey guys uh, this is uh, about a week a week later and it's been a week since I got this machine and I went ahead and replaced the blue gear this is what was left of the broken uh, blue gear so with this replaced um, this should fix uh, any kind of um, mechanical issue um, so I, this sh should be fine now mechanically I don't know if it's got a problem with the electronics because I see a bunch of those Elna uh, capacitors and um, who knows if there are any of them that are bad or if there's some that are bad how many of them are bad well it could be a whole lot of them that could be bad because uh, the, the, almost every time I've checked them on the uh, beta machines they've always been bad or they're starting to go bad um, or they're leaking so we're gonna get a tape here now so I've got a test tape I'm gonna see what's going on here Well, something's not quite right. Something is not quite right. So, it appears that the gears are not uh, turning. So, I'm not sure what's going on there. I've done blue gears before, so I don't know why the, so I don't understand why it's not loading. Yeah, it's, uh, Okay, so I gotta take this back apart, I guess. Well, guys, I uh, spent about an hour taking the mechanism apart and uh, figuring out how it works, uh, putting it all back together. It's been about a year since I worked on a Sony VHS machine. You know, I replaced the blue gear on another one about a year ago. And um, then I replaced the blue gear in this one. This is the one I found at the Goodwill for eight bucks. And I figured because of how old this thing was and because of what it was, uh, normally I don't give VHS a second look. Um, but this one, just the fact that it had uh, flying erase heads and I knew that this was the late 80s or real early 90s 
And this was when Sony was making VHS decks. Now they started making them in, uh, I believe it was 88, 1988, they started making uh, VHS machines. But they were still making beta machines up until 93. Uh, and but they completely dropped Betamax in '93 as they came out with the SL HF 2000, not to be confused with the SL 2000 portable. There was an SL 2000 which was the portable, then they had the SL HF 2000 which was the last uh, Betamax VCR you could buy in the United States. So, anyway, but they, Sony went to VHS, and, uh, because they, they knew that, uh, the beta format was dying, uh, they, they basically, they were holding on for a long time, they were holding on, trying to, th trying to re-educate people on how much better the picture quality was with beta than VHS, Anyway, so we spent about an hour, and uh, I've got it hooked up to the TV, so let's see what happens. It should load now. And it does. So, okay, appears to be working now. So that's good. Let's go ahead and do our picture search let's go forward seems to work okay let's go backward oh 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 we got a problem we got a problem oh we'll go back into play looks like it's not rewinding that's one of the problems Yeah, it, it, it starts to rewind and then and then it just kind of stops. So I don't know why the rewind isn't working, but if we we'll hit high speed rewind so that it will hopefully suck the tape back in there. There we go. Now we're gonna hit eject so it doesn't eat the tape, but it's not rewinding. So I got this thing back apart and. Uh, I've checked the timing, the timing is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. So it's got to be the load switch, or it's got to be a, a gear that is uh, um, cracked or something. So, so there's a, a screw on each side that takes the load switch off. So I'm going to take the load switch apart. And I gotta make a mental note of how the mode switch goes together because uh, if I get the mode switch in the wrong uh, mode, it will no longer play a tape. So I just have to remember that because uh, if you get the mode switch wrong, Uh, you can cause more problems, and if the mode switch ain't timed right, um, it will never play. So, just gotta be careful as to how I take things apart. And make a mental note as to how they come apart so that I can put it back together. So, you know, I'm gonna make a, a mental note of, uh, mode switch as to how it goes together so as you can see there is a arrow that is pointing to a little dot and that is going to let me know um, where the mode switch goes back so if we take this mode switch apart uh, we just press on the plastic tabs and that should allow this to pop open so let me do that so this is mode switch just took it apart and it does kind of look dirty. Uh, it may not be dirty enough to cause the problem, but yeah, who knows. I'm going to put just a little bit of alcohol on it and get a Q-tip and we'll clean this up.
you got the mode switch back together and uh, there was quite a bit of dirt uh, on the I mean you can't really see a whole lot I mean that's the most of the dirt uh, on the q-tip so I don't know I have no idea if this is gonna fix it or not um, I don't have too much faith in this fixing it um, and um, but well, you know hey it's, it's worth a shot I mean there was there that's quite a bit of dirt that came off of the cute on the q-tip so yeah who knows uh, maybe just maybe uh, that will uh, cure its problem so well guys um, I've got it all back together so cleaning the mode switch did not do anything uh, however it was something that needed to be done because you can see the dirt that was on the q-tips um, but you know what I can do is put it in and it will play and what I know that I can do if I hit the high speed rewind it'll suck the tape in and I can hit eject okay it still ate it just a tad bit but um, uh, we'll revisit this at, uh, at a later date and uh, we'll get this We'll get this fully operational. Um, but for right now, the only thing this machine is going to do is play a tape. Uh, it'll for it'll fast forward. You can do. Uh, I can get it to do uh, picture search and rewind sometimes, and sometimes I can't. So there's something going on with the idler. Some kind of dirt got on the dirt got on the top of this cover here. Get a paper towel and clean that off. But uh, anyway, yeah, we'll revisit this machine at a later date because uh, right now I'm just kind of been working all afternoon on it and I haven't really gotten much I haven't really gotten that that far in this machine other than fixing uh, the blue gear uh, putting it back in time uh, getting it up and going so where it'll play a tape it'll fast forward a tape that's all it'll do it will not rewind and it wants to eat the tape um, so I was wanting to get this thing fully operational, and we will uh, eventually. Now, there's something going on with the idler, and and that's why it's not rewinding tapes. It could be that there's a tape in sensor that might have failed, uh, that's causing the problem, and and that's what I'm wondering. Uh, because these did have a tendency to have the tape in sensors go bad and sometimes they would they would and that was another thing with these Sony VHS machines is that those in sensors do have a tendency to fail now due to the fact that I have a parts deck that I could pull the tape in sensor off of and put it onto this one and see if that restores the rewind but it starts to go into rewind and then it stops so apparently I'm really starting to think that it's the tape in sensor that's going to need to be changed on this but at least we got this thing to play back tapes which is more than what it did when we first picked it up from the Goodwill 
when I picked it up at the Goodwill, uh, it wasn't threading the tape properly. It was threading a tape, but it wasn't threading it properly because only one of the tape guides was working. So it only had one tape guide working. Well, I changed both the tape guides and uh, changed the, you know, the, the blue gear because um, the one tape guide was kind of bent and so I kind of changed the, the tape guide and that cured its problem with because uh, I had a problem with the retracting and with the guide going back and forth it was getting jammed well the guide was bent and so I just replaced it with another guide that I had in a parts deck so uh, I think if we put a tape in sensor in here and, and that should fix the rewind. But the idler does seem to be working. If you move the idler by hand, the idler works. And it starts to rewind, and then it just stops. And that just kind of really makes me think that maybe the tape-in sensors uh, are not working, and that's why it's not rewinding. But, you know, the nice thing about this thing is it does have high-speed rewind, and it's got flying erase heads. It's a forehead mo it's a forehead hi-fi uh, stereo, so it is a higher-end uh, machine. But it's something that's, you know, it was at the Goodwill for a reason. It could be that originally this machine stopped rewinding, and that's why they got rid of it and and maybe the blue gear broke after it started having problems with the rewind and then maybe the blue gear broke and who knows why the blue gear broke it could have been that uh, somebody noticed that the mechanism needed to be re-greased so maybe somebody re-greased the mechanism but the blue gear had already been broken, so I don't know. It's hard to say with this one, you know, unless you can talk to the owner of this machine that had it previously. I mean, who knows? The owner could have been the original owner. The previous owner could have been the original owner, you know, and maybe he took it to a repair shop and uh, maybe they told him that uh, it had... A problem with the blue gear and probably the end sensor. Tape end sensor is probably bad and uh, they probably said well you can't get parts for them anymore so you know and the, they made so many VHS machines out there there's so many VHS machines floating out there in, in, in the thrift stores and the Goodwills and Salvation Armies and stuff you know People don't want to spend a lot of money getting a VHS machine working uh, because there's so many of them out there. It's a different story with the beta machines because with the beta machines, they didn't make them for that long a time. They made way more VHS machines than they did beta machines. And the beta machines are something that people want to get fixed because it's not like you're going to find a beta machine sitting in a thrift store. Most of the time that just doesn't happen. Uh, yes, I have found beta machines in the wild. But again, they don't work. So they need fixed. But I'm just saying that, you know, VHS machines, a dime a dozen. You can find them anywhere. So, finding one of these is no big deal. People just like, okay, not fixable, or they can't get the part for it. You can't get the instant tape in sensors for them anymore. You can't. I've looked. I've checked. I, you can't get parts for them. The only parts that you can get for these things on eBay right now are, are the blue gears. And the blue gear is what breaks. And those are the ones that seem to... I don't think they're even making those anymore. I think that once the new old stock runs out, then that's it. I don't think anybody's going to continue making a blue gear for them. Because I just don't see Sony continuing the manufacturing of the blue gear. 
you know, um, and Sony started to farm out to other companies uh, to make their VHS machines because I think it was like in 1994, 95, Sony started having uh, other companies make VHS machines for them. Uh, but this was made back when Sony made everything. So Sony made this machine in-house. So this was back when Sony uh, was still making the, the VHS decks. Now, they started making them in 1988 is when they started making them. So, but, you know, it is a nice machine. It's a good-looking machine. I like the way it looks. I like the fact that it does have flying erase heads. So, hey, if I wanted to make a recording on it, you know, I could, but uh, it's not fully operational, so it doesn't make sense for me to try to make any recordings on it until it's fully operational, which we will visit, visit this later on in another video later on, and uh, we'll just try to replacing the tape-in sensors first, and uh, we'll see if that works, because that will probably fix it. Because I don't see anything mechanically that's keeping it from working. So, anyway. Uh, that'll be the end of this video. And I uh, hope you enjoyed, you know, taking a look at this thing. Uh, we got it from the Goodwill not working. And uh, we, we at least got it to where it'll play a tape. So, at least it somewhat functions. Uh, but uh, as far as getting it fully functional, that's going to be at a later date. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing this thing. Uh, I know that uh, we didn't get it all the way up and running, but uh, this was just basically just taking a look at this thing and seeing if we can make it work. And which we, it'll play tape, but you know, that's it. So, and yes, it'll fast forward. So, why is the fast forward working and not, not the rewind? Again, the tape-in sensor. If one of the tape-in sensors is bad, depending on what side it is. So, this side I think works, but it's this side that's not working. The rewind side. So, if it, it starts to do it and then it realizes that it can't detect whether the tape is at the end or not and it stops so i think that's what's going on with this machine so i think that's what we'll do in the next video we'll replace that first and we'll try that first and if that don't work which i think it will work but if that don't work then we'll explore other options that we'll have to get this up and going so anyway we're gonna power it off and I'm going to put this thing in storage. I'm just going to store it and uh, for right now. And until I can um, have some more time to work on it. But I've got other projects i got to do. I've got a Laserdisc player that I've got to repair for a customer. Uh, same customer who brought those two beta machines to me. And I don't think that one's going to be fixable. But I'm going to take a look at it again and see what I can do with it. Uh, but yeah, I've got other projects, and there's another customer that's coming uh, that has a, a beta machine that he wants me to take a look at. So I just I got a lot of projects going on right now, and I need to take care of my customers first uh, before I do any of my personal projects. So uh, and because I don't really care uh, about having another VHS machine I've got a JVC Super VHS so um, I pretty much don't need to have this thing running right now I mean do I want to get it fully operational in the future oh yeah absolutely I do want to get this thing fully operational but it's not on my priority list for right now anyway we'll see you later bye bye